You know, I went to three thrift stores, but who can't go to a thrift store in a new area? Like, it's in our blood. What's up, guys? I just got back from vacation in Florida. I had a great time with my brother and his friends. It's really nice to refresh. But what happened to my eBay store while I was on vacation? Well, I can tell you, I'm going to pack up orders from the vacation. I'm going to talk about how I went on vacation mode, what I did before, and what I'm doing after to try to make up for the loss in sales. Because, yes, no doubt, when you go on vacation mode, your sales do take a dive. But first, I'm going to show you the awesome item that I thrifted in Florida. And if you hadn't guessed already, it's this jacket right here. So this is the North Face moto biker style jacket now the reason i say moto style and biker is because it's got this crazy like padding on it it's not super well insulated like you would for most of the ski jackets and things like that now it's very difficult to figure out the exact value of this jacket there is the north face steep what is it steep tech that is the model of this jacket there's a vintage one that was all over the ebay comps it was going for about 150 to 200 dollars very consistent this one was newer than that. One of the reasons I knew it was newer was because the tags on the inside were kind of silky. Typically, the silky stuff's going to be like your newer tags. If it's more like paper feeling, that's going to be a, a more of a vintage tag. I had so much trouble finding this, and then I did a very generic search, North Face Jacket, and I just started looking, and I did men's, of course. I went from high to low because I knew this was definitely going to be like at least a $100 jacket. I just didn't know exactly which model it was. After much searching, I did find the exact one, and it was selling for about $300. Now, there was a red and black one that sold for $300. There was another blue and black one like this. They were much bigger sizes. This is a size medium. Definitely my size, not something I would really wear, but I wanted to wear it to show it off to you to show that no matter where you thrift in the country, you typically can find good stuff. Now, this was at a Plato's Closet. I paid $35 for it. I felt like it was pretty fair, but I wanted to make sure I was going to make at least like $150, $200 because I didn't want to have to like put this in my carry-on and struggle to get it back home and then not make a lot of money on it. Now, there were some flaws on this that I overlooked. If you guys see here, it's missing one of the snap-like covers. It has the inside snap piece, but it doesn't have the cover for one of them. So I definitely overlooked that whenever I bought it. I don't think it's going to hurt the value. One of the reasons I say that is because the zipper is 100% in working order, and that's needed to close the jacket. If this snap was needed to close the jacket, it could cause the value to go down significantly. No doubt it's going to cause a little bit of, of a lower value because it is missing a pretty, you know, pretty important piece, but it's not a game breaker. Still at $35 definitely money to be made i did go to a couple other thrift stores i found some decent items things i would pick up to sell but not worthy enough to take back on the plane because if you guys travel you know it costs to like take stuff back and i didn't want to have to like check a bag or anything like that so right now we have 89 items to pack up it's two thousand ninety five dollars i'm going to break down the numbers of exactly like what happened while we were on vacation mode and i'm going to pack these up and show you some of the best sales that i had so currently I don't have my push cart assembled. I left my drill and tools at home, but right now I got these plastic bins and then I have my inventory, the empty box to put the new, uh, newly sold items in there. It works okay, but I do have to go back and forth to the monitor to find out what the next item is. So once I get that rolling cart, I can slap a tablet up there and it should be a lot smoother, a lot quicker when it comes to picking items. But for now, since I don't have that assembled, I just have to make do with what I got around here. All right, so we got all the items pulled. I went ahead and shipped all the items that went for sale under $10 plus shipping. So I do $8.99 shipping. So anything under $10 would be like five plus $8.99. So that's what, like $14 including shipping. So I'm not going to talk about any of those items just because they're pretty terrible. And we had 89 when we started. We're down to 56. So that's 56 items. That's $10 plus shipping or above. Those are like where the real profit's at. All the other ones that sell for lower money, they've been in the store for many, many months, you know, closer to a year's time. That's just how it goes. We had two combined orders and those were around like I think like eight bucks a piece plus shipping and then we have the shipping multiplier. So we're gonna get into the items. Some of these brands I'm gonna talk about, I'll probably put pop-ups of ones that are a little more um, obscure, things that you may not have heard of. And the first one is one of those. So this is Vintage Ducks Back. This is a camouflage hunting jean. Camo is something that sells all the time. This one was pretty good. It went for $16 plus $8.99 shipping and it looks like it's going ground advantage. So yeah, even at one pound plus 
uh, like 15 ounces, it's still going to be $7.84. Ground Advantage is just the way to go nowadays. You know, I used to do so much with the priority flat rate envelopes, and now I hardly ever use those. The only one I'll use is the legal one occasionally, and that's $8.27. And that's going to come in handy if it is heavy like this, but it's far enough away to where it's going to cost more money. All right, this next one didn't go for as much as I wanted it to go for. It was a Peter Millar wool silk v-neck long sleeve, and it's a blend between those two. It only went for $10 plus shipping. I really expected this to go for a little bit more money. It's how it goes sometimes. So the next time I see it, I'll remember that anything at $10 plus shipping, which is $18.99 shipped, I'm trying not to spend more than like $4 on those items. Ideally three. But if I see this for five, I really have to consider if it's the right move. It was in blue, so maybe if it was like a black color, it might go for more money. Black seems to be a bit stronger in the color spectrum for clothing, at least from my experience. But yeah, I mean, you know, profit's profit, but you want to like understand uh, how much you're willing to spend, how much you're willing to wait for that profit, because sometimes you're waiting a long time for just like very little profit. This is a great one here. A lot of people sleep on. This is Wrangler Pearl Snap. This is a 3XL. And it's in this like reddish maroon plaid color with some blue and white. Went for $10 plus shipping. Pearl Snaps Wrangler, they sell them at Walmart. I think it's $22 brand new or like something around that mark. This one went for $18.99. These are items that I'm picking up for very cheap. Probably even on like dollar days. Definitely less than three bucks. But anything 3XL or bigger, especially Pearl Snap, long sleeve, short sleeve. Uh, I'm picking that up in most brands. This is a pair of shorts by the brand Abercrombie & Fitch. So Abercrombie, it's got like that thicker um, kind of vintage style where it seems like the cotton was just really thick. They have like jackets like this. This is just a pair of chino shorts. They were plaid. They went for $10.60 plus their $8.99 shipping. Looks like it's shipping for $6.16. If this was cargo, it definitely would have gone for more money. I don't pick it up like all the time, but most times that I pick it up, it does sell around the 19 to, you know, $25 mark. This next one, so this is the Wrangler Pearl Snaps. Now, if you guys have been following the channel for a while, some months back, I think it was even last summer possibly, I bought 75 of these Wrangler Pearl Snaps. They were men's medium and they were black and they were all from, I think it was a boot barn or something like that. It went to a Salvation Army. They had them priced, I don't know what they were priced at, but I ended up getting them for, I believe, $2.50 a piece. And somebody had commented, I can't remember who, but they said, you're going to take four years to sell all 75 of them. Well, I can tell you, with this update, there's 44 left. So we've sold, in one year, a pretty good chunk of them. And I had priced them at $15.99 plus shipping. And a lot of them are selling around the $10 plus shipping mark. Now, I sold quite a bit in the, you know, a little bit higher than that, like $15, $12 plus shipping. But um, yeah, these are great. Now, I made a mistake with those clothes, so I should have bought the entire store's lot. Like every single piece they had, I should have bought if I could have gotten it cheap enough. And the more I bought, I would have got it cheaper. Now, they had sizes all over the place, a lot of smalls, some sizes that definitely would take like a number of years to sell. That just goes to show like, even at my like experience level, I didn't pull the trigger on it, but um, in retrospect, it would have been better. If I could have got them for a dollar instead of like the 250 and bought like, I don't know, a thousand pieces, that, that definitely would have been the move. And just goes to show like next time that happens, which it may be a couple years before that happens again, you know, maybe I'll go for it because I have the space and I have the patience to wait. But at that time, I just, I felt like what if none of these sell? Right, that was the big problem because there's a reason why that store got rid of them. Like something, something didn't sell for them. Next up, this is a Robert Graham. So this Robert Graham was a striped shirt and it was brown. So Robert Graham's typically known for like their flashy looks. This is a brown one. It sold for 12 plus shipping, so pretty bad on this one. I probably spent like five dollars on this type of shirt, uh, but if it's a Robert Graham that has a lot more design, something that really sticks out, not only on the racks when you're looking for it, but just like you know it's got a lot going on. I'll definitely spend up closer to like 10 bucks because I expect to get closer to like $30 whenever I do that. This one though, a lot less. So I had somebody message me this week and they asked what kind of short sell, like what brands to look for. And it's always like a double-edged thing to, to have people ask like, well, what do I need to be picking up? Because, well, I mean, that's, 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 that's it, right? That's everything. 
uh, in this business. It's like, what do I pick up? How much do I spend? This is a pair of Under Armour shorts. This is cargo, sold for $10 plus shipping. Really bad. I thought it could go for more money. I thought the cargoes like in, you know, Nike and Under Armour were going for a little bit more money, at least in years past they had been. So not sure if I didn't um, keyword it correctly, but when it comes to shorts, like you just kind of kind of, I don't know, like look at the data and see what's selling, like especially in your area and what you have available. I uh, am seeing a lot of high prices for shorts. Like a lot of Chino shorts are eight to 12 to $16 in my area and almost none of those you can pick up. So the least amount of time that I'm looking at it, like that's me not understanding like myself which ones are doing well because none of them are in the price range even if it was like a really good selling item so it kind of makes it difficult now if you're shopping like the bins which i despise or say you just have a plug on a way to get like really cheap inventory then maybe you can look at some of those and and think like okay this hurley uh submersible or i don't know if it's billabong hurley billabong those types of brands volcom you know, some of those shorts sell for really good money, but you got to be able to get them for really cheap. So if you're spending, you know, five plus to get every single item or like $7, I really don't know what Chino shorts out there uh, would be that good other than the ones a lot of people know about, like your Cools, Lululemons, even those, you know, you can spend eight bucks on and make some money. It's just kind of a tough thing to to explain and, and tell you, you know, like give you all the answers, like, you know, whenever... I, can't, I don't have all the answers right now. And it changes every season, it seems like. One thing I've noticed that changed a lot recently is the cheaper brands are getting better and better quality. So when I'm in a thrift store and I'm looking at like, say board shorts, for example, I'll just kind of scan the board shorts and I'll think, what's a good one to pick up? Oh, that looks interesting. And then it's like a, like a George or something. And I'm just like, oh, that's like a cool design, but it's, it's a Walmart brand. Uh, the one I just packed up, that was Tommy Bahama, 100% linen. It was a yellow long sleeve button shirt. Went for $20 plus shipping. So almost $30 on the Tommy Bahama 100% linen, linen. And I'm willing to pay upwards uh, to like eight bucks on those just because I know 100% linen does really well this time of year. This one here is Harley Davidson cargo shorts. Now this sold for $14. 62 cents plus shipping and that's harley davidson for you their casual wear stuff does decently well but the thrift stores anytime they see harley they pretty much price them up really high i think they didn't see this one properly because uh i typically can't get my hands on a lot of harley davidson stuff we got territory ahead i've been buying territory ahead for a good while now typically does well sometimes it takes a while to sell a while being like six months plus this sold for $16.53 plus $8.99 shipping, and it's under the 8-ounce rate. A lot of their stuff, you know, this is even a large, but their materials are just pretty lightweight, so you can get the cheaper shipping label, which is always nice. Right here, we got some Ariat jeans. Now, this is one that possibly could go priority legal flat rate because it is over 2 pounds, and we're going to see where it went in the country. But I can tell you, I get a lot of Texas sales for my Ariat stuff. Area is super popular in Texas. It's really expensive to get your hands on. This is the fire resistant, and it went for 30 plus 899 shipping. So looks like it's going to Missouri, and that's definitely going to be ground advantage with how close it is to my area. Looks like uh, ground advantage is six dollars and fifty four cents, and if I went priority, it'd be seven dollars. So definitely going to go ground advantage, and I think I'm going to use the bigger poly mailer. You guys know I got uh, all my links to the poly mailers. This is the much bigger bag that I use. I believe it's 19 by 14 and a half, and it's just a lot easier to get in here than the 10 by 13s. Overbought on these big bags. When I made my move, I couldn't find these white ones, so I bought like, I don't know if it was a thousand. I hope it wasn't 2,000. I think it was a thousand of these bags, and they're in black, so I'm definitely set on these larger poly mailers for the next few years because <laughs> I don't use them that often. If there's a multi quantity sale, I'll typically. Uh, Use the poly bags if I can, but sometimes I have to go to a box as well. I'm trying to get them used up, but yeah, you can click the links. It helps out the channel because I am uh, affiliated with those links, so I get a little kickback. I really appreciate the people that do use those links. They're down. It's those Amazon links, and whether or not you buy like that specific item, but if you buy another item, then I can still get uh, commission on the other items you buy if you travel through my link to get to your. Amazon shopping needs, so really appreciate that. This is a vintage Ralph Lauren. This is a long sleeve button shirt, 100% uh, 
Um, well, it's 100% cotton, but I, I think it's chambray. Uh, I put denim or I'll put denim chambray. I People have told me numerous times like what the difference is, and I understand what it is, but when I'm identifying it in the wild, like I still don't truly know it. And that's really the difference between like really knowing what you're looking at and just like knowing enough that you know there's some value there. But um, anyway, this one went for $30 plus shipping. And those are great pickups. I mean, I'll spend a lot of money on these just because I've always sold these for good money. There's never been one that I haven't sold for good money. And that's, that's a sign of a really strong item that's been strong for many years. Probably will always be strong. It's just such a classic look, the, the denim stuff and a good brand. I actually have one over there in the other office. And I think I put on my Instagram. Sometimes I'll put on my stories if I find something really cool. It was uh, the vintage Ralph Lauren and it's a pearl snap denim shirt. And that one I think is like $100 items, but it's, uh, it's a large, but it fits me really well. And it's not like I really like wearing that kind of like style, but it's just cool to have like such an expensive resellable piece that it'll probably only go up in age. I mean, it'll go up in price with its age, so. I got it sitting in my office. I just, I don't know if I'm gonna wear it, you know, around the office if it's a little chilly or something, but uh, it's good to find those those denim Ralph Lauren pieces. This is another Ralph Lauren. This is a 2XLT short sleeve button shirt. Went for 20.88 plus shipping, so right at $30. I'm usually spending even upwards to 10 bucks on these because uh, t 20 plus shipping for me is is a pretty common sale for this style of of item the bigger the better when it comes to those we got Robert Graham this is a chino short and I don't find a lot of the Robert Graham shorts now they have jeans in Robert Graham they have shorts but I can tell you I've I've sold most most everything in Robert Graham they sell for good money I mean this one was only 1625 plus shipping but it's like a for sure sale and that's what I really go for when I'm sourcing I don't want items that you know say Say you think it's like a really expensive item, but you're not 100% sure if it's like authentic, then you buy it hoping for that big win and then you, you know, maybe you get it. And it's like, well, that's great. But then how many times do you do that? But it turns out that it's not what you thought it was. And then you have all this inventory of like, this was almost a really good sale, but now I got to figure out what to do with it. So like one, one good example with clothing is True Religion. True Religion has tons of jeans. You know, they go for tons of money, like, you know, $50, $100, $200 even. But I could not tell you what a real True Religion jean looks like. I, I couldn't tell you what the fake ones are. I couldn't tell you what all the section row, the, the different models and stuff. They got, like, the Billy one. Just all these different ones that I have no idea if it's actually true. I really don't. Probably going to stay that way because I don't really feel like learning it. Because, like I said, sometimes even if I learn it or I think I know what I'm looking at, uh, I could make a mistake and those true religion jeans are always going to be like 20 bucks at the store I've seen them priced at like 70 and 80 bucks and at half off day It's still like way too expensive. That was just a pair of prana shorts or no a pair of prana pants went for 1063 plus shipping So it was like a red pair. I bought a bunch of the same prana ones uh, One day and they've been selling off for around that mark. This is lululemon short sleeve polo It's a uh, purple size medium went for $20 plus shipping it's really nice when the thrift stores miss Lululemon because, like I said, those cheaper brands are starting to look closer to closer like Lululemon. And sometimes, you know, if the tag's not there and then the person pricing the items doesn't see it, then they'll just price it like a standard shirt. So 20 plus shipping on the Lululemon polo. They're long sleeve button shirts I've been selling and they've been doing really well too. So it makes me feel more confident paying more money when I see, you know, what it's selling for. And it kind of gets me to thinking like, whenever you're shipping items, you know, some people are like, well, that's the one thing I want to hire. You know, I want to have somebody ship items because it's pretty basic. There's only a few different methods to ship. It's kind of hard to mess that up. The problem with, you know, sourcing out the shipping is if you don't stay on top of like trends of prices and how things are, are moving, then you have like old data basically. The reselling market is constantly changing. Like this is a the brand Twillery. It's a performance long sleeve button shirt. This only went for 15 plus shipping. This was a much more expensive shirt a year ago, maybe even like six months ago. I don't think I undersold this. It just kind of changed. 
it changed a little bit. So if I had somebody doing all the shipping, maybe Twillery's out there and I think, oh, I can still spend $10 on Twillery when in fact um, you can't, you can't spend that much. And you wouldn't really know that without seeing the data yourself now. Of course, you see the sales come in on your phone and if that's good enough for you to remember what's what, then I suppose that works. Here's just the uh, Ralph Lauren Polo. Now, this is the solid green. It's the lime green one, but it it's the one that feels like softer. So they have a couple different um, ways their cotton feels. Sometimes you can see like the stitching, and then sometimes it's so smooth that like you can't see the stitching. And those have a much softer feel to it. And if those are in really good condition, really nice like bright colors, or like a black, I'll pick those up. Um, all day long for like less than five bucks. This went for 13 plus shipping. So that's why I decided to pick it up. I used to collect them too and then I would always get stains on them. So that was always kind of a problem. This is Greg Norman. Greg Norman is a pretty cheap brand. I know a lot of you have seen it out there and most likely have passed on it. This was an all over camo print and it was in black and it was a 2XL. Now with those, you know, a great size, all over print being camouflage, this is... Um, this is a pickup. Oh no, wait a second. It's shark print. Okay, I, I misread it. This is a shark print, not camo. Regardless, I think camo would have done just the same. It was 13 plus, 71 plus shipping, and it's under eight ounces. I don't know why I thought it was camo. I guess I couldn't see it. That's a good sale. So Greg Norman's one that they've, they're stepping up with their quality. Like people are, they're enjoying it, you know, and a brand can come, uh, they can come back to life a little bit. Like if it's cool, if people are wearing it and that's what's uh, popular or whatever, the, the price is going to go up. That's why like vintage is such an interesting market because, you know, if a bunch of young kids start wearing a bunch of vintage clothes, then you start seeing your Jinko jeans go up in value and, and things that you would never, never even guess be worth something when before they just weren't cool. This is a Grayson polo. Now, I sold this for 25 plus shipping. I probably could have got a little more money for this. But when offers come in that are fairly strong, I'm I'm going to take them, especially when I'm on vacation. I figure, you know, why not just like take the sale, take the money. I'll find another Grayson Polo. In my area, there's just a lot of uh, golfers, so I'm always finding this kind of stuff. All right, we got a Vineyard Vines. Now, this is a wool blend, so similar to the Peter Millar, but this one actually went for $15 plus shipping. So Vineyard Vines, Peter Millar, they're kind of, they're a little in the same vein. And this is, you know, still less than what I would have wanted. I would want at least 20 plus shipping when it comes to these like wool blended items. They just feel really nice. I could tell the quality is there. But uh, sometimes, you know, this is a purple one. Maybe, maybe no one's really into the purple. I thought it looked good. So we'll take the 15 plus shipping. Hopefully get it under the 12 ounce rate. Now, even taking out the inside bag that I usually use that has the label on it. Sometimes I'll take that off to try to dip under the, the rate. It was only 616 for the label, but would have been nice to cut it under. Here's a good one too. I'm sure you've seen before out in the thrift store. This is an Under Armour Polo. It's got the thin striping, but it's like the highlighter orange color with some gray. And this one made it $10 plus shipping. So yeah, those Under Armors, they're going to be worth um, they're going to be priced up. Now, if you get it for five, I suppose that's okay. I mean, it's five into $18.99 shipped really is not where, uh, <laughs> it's not really where you want to be, but that's where, that's where I'm at with this. And it's a two XL, but I've seen those a lot. That line came out and so many people are buying Under Armour brand new on Amazon for, you know, I don't even know what they're going for. Maybe like 40 bucks or something. And they just don't want to spend like 25 or 30 on a used one when they can buy a new one for that. So, you know, I don't do a lot of that research where I'm looking at retail prices and trying to understand like where the market is for resale. But that is an interesting one, Under Armour. I just made a rookie mistake. My iPhone ran out of space for the video, so it like stops recording. I had sneezed a few times and then I was like, oh, I need to go like, you know, take a break and I paused the camera and then I saw that it was already like cut off. So I'm kind of glad that I started sneezing, but we skipped out on a lot of sales. So I'm going to quickly go through those and kind of talk about what I was talking about and uh, just, just bear with me because there were some good ones and that's why I want to go back. 
The first one after the Under Armour shirt was Levi's 560s. And I remember talking about Levi 560s. This sold for, uh, I don't have the prices on these. I'm going to have to remember without having to click into them. But it was $34 plus $8.99 shipping. 560s is the, uh, Levi's 560s is the baggy pair of Levi's. Those are the loose fit. I think that all happened because of Billie Eilish. Around the time Billie Eilish got super popular, seemed like she was wearing a lot of baggy, that vintage like Y2K vibe, and I think that's what kind of brought on all these baggy jeans. So Levi 560s is one that I'll pick up, and depending on the size and condition and age of the Levi, I'll pick those up for like upwards of 20 bucks because I'm always selling them for 30 plus shipping at the very minimum. Next one was one that was really cool. This is vintage trophy club jacket i picked this one up in oklahoma the trophy club jacket i'll put a pop-up somewhere over here and basically with that one is i knew it was camouflage i saw it was a jacket i didn't know what the brand was but it looked like it was a pretty good quality jacket so i decided to look it up saw some high sales this one went for about 45 plus shipping or maybe it's like 42 plus shipping so about 50 bucks on the jacket next was croft and borrow and i remember i gave my buddy brian roning a shout out He's a YouTuber and he got me on Croft and Borrow. So I always smile when I sell it because uh, we know there's some value there. This was just a large, sold for 10 plus, 899 shipping, but the bigger sizes can sell for a lot of money. Next up, we have Dry Joys by Foot Joy. Don't really know the difference between Dry Joys and Foot Joy. I know it's like a different line for some reason, but uh, this one went for, it, it was like 22 plus shipping. It was just a pullover jacket. Or no, it was a full zip jacket. Then we had some Carhartt pants. I remember mentioning Carhartt pants. Uh, I. I think you need to be a little careful with Carhartt because some of the stuff can go for, like the double knees can go for tons of money, but like just standard chino pants. Unfortunately, you know, they don't go for as much. This was 15 plus shipping and uh, Carhartt's one of those where like when I was working construction, like that's a good brand to use. That's a good pair of pants to, to wear, but they just don't resell for a whole lot sometimes. Then I had Kufandi and then I went down this line of like Kufandi. It was a linen like boho pair of pants. I went down this little rabbit hole of Kufandi because they're one of the people that send me clothes to review their clothing and they give it to me for free and they pay me for the content. I've been having Randy uh, photograph these items and try to sell them. A lot of them pretty low value because you can buy them new for you know really cheap. This item went for I think it was like 11 60 plus shipping or something like that. It kind of got me into the I know what it was. It got me into the conversation about sponsors and things like that. Now, running ads. Now, okay, so there's two types of things, right? First off, whenever I was working full-time, 9 to 5 as a commercial copier repairman, which uh, not the most enjoyable job, but I was always looking for ways to make money. Like I was mowing lawns. I was doing like tree work. You know, if a tree fell down in someone's yard, I'd take my chainsaw over and I would, you know, chop it up for them and I would keep some of the wood to burn and split and all that. When I found out about eBay, I started making money on eBay and then obviously made it you know, decently successful to survive off of one. Well, still looking for other ways to make money and I'm constantly trying to find like easy ways to make money. Don't get me wrong, like mowing lawns, very enjoyable, very satisfying. It helps the OCD seeing like a messed up lawn turn perfectly neat and clean, but it you're trading too much time for too little money. You know, like this necklace right here, I made a video talking about this necklace and they paid me to make the video and they gave me the necklace. So I've been wearing the necklace on and off now. They're not a sponsor of the channel. I'm actually an influencer for them with uh, Timu, the Found Banking, the Gyro Pack, those types of sponsors. They're paying me to run ads on the channel. People are like, well, why are you doing that? And I'm kind of like, I'm still trying to make money other ways. Like you guys watch the channel because you want to learn how to make money on eBay. Like I get it. And I'm trying to tell you like, you know, this is what sells. At the same time, I'm still trying to make money other ways. Like I'm not just relying on eBay for my income. It covers all of what I need it to cover, but I'm still trying to make other money because it's exciting. Like it's fun using your skills to make other money. That was like the little tangent I got into. And then I got into these shorts. We're going to talk about them. So Peter Millar, cool, Haller Bros. Those are three shorts that the gentleman who had asked what shorts sell well on eBay, those three sell pretty well. They all sold for 18, 20, um, Haller Bros was like 14, all that plus shipping. So um, those are ones to look for. But whenever somebody asks me like, well, what sells in the shorts category? I'm thinking, because they're asking me who sells lower dollar items, they're thinking of the common stuff that sells well. And for me, that would be like the Hurley, Billabong, what is it, Vulcan, PacSun, like those types of shorts. If you can find them for less than $3, there's money in those shorts. Ralph Lauren's another one that's more common. You can sell that stuff, but you have to understand sizing, condition, patterns, material, like things like that. 
in order to make it work. But I'm not seeing any affordable uh, prices for those types of items. You know, most of the shorts are now like six minimum, eight, nine, twelve, sixteen. Like it's getting a little harder to sell anything. But um, you just gotta keep keep trying, you know. I mean, what else what else can we do? Okay, so now we're back. <laughs> we're back to where we need to be. This is a long sleeve pearl snap. This is Cinch Miller Ranch. Now I'd never seen the Cinch Miller Ranch uh, line. Now this is a thicker uh, pearl snap than like your typical Cinch shirts. I thought it would go for a lot of money. It went for eighteen ninety nine plus shipping. I wish it would have gone for a little more. I remember I got it on half off day, I think, and. Um, I was still really happy to find it though, you know, it made a little bit of money, but it was over a pound, so that's another thing, the shipping label is $7.84 over a pound, and that stinks, but that is the way of the world, and that's why I charge almost 9 bucks for shipping, ah, it feels good, the sun came back out, that nasty storm, if you guys, uh, well, you're not going to see this, but like my Instagram story, I've... post about like the day so if you guys want to see some of the stuff throughout my day I sometimes post on there there was some crazy storm came in really fast don't know if the uh was it the solar eclipse caused it from yesterday I hear there's supposed to be some earthquakes or something after uh the eclipse not sure what that's all about but we'll see we'll see what happens this is a pair of cool chino pants I love this brand because it sells all the time but none of their pants fit me they just don't they're like for i think like thinner guys i don't know if they have like a a more relaxed fit pair but it'd be cool if i can find one it went for 28 dollars plus shipping it's nice i got some offers and sales coming in now uh one thing about vacation mode which i probably should have talked about earlier in the video but if you are still watching the video one, I appreciate it, and two, uh, let's get into vacation mode a little bit. So I went on vacation. I left on a Thursday morning, and I came back on a Monday morning. Short trip, two-hour flight, you know, went to Florida, got some sun, got to see the beach. I didn't get as much sun as I wanted to. We mainly, like, went to restaurants and bars. and uh, It was like a WrestleMania kind of watch party with my brother's friends, and um, he was also retiring one of his friends. So that was that and had a great time, met a lot of great people, but uh, vacation mode. So one thing about vacation mode, there is vacation mode on eBay. Not sure if you need to be like by a store to get that capability to go on vacation mode or if it's just standard with like people who start eBay. I'm not really sure on that one, but one thing to watch out for when you click vacation mode on, if you have any outstanding offers that people have sent on an item and you agreed to it, but they have not paid for it. So like a waiting payment. If you go on vacation mode and they pay while you're gone, even though you clicked vacation mode, you have to ship that out that day. It doesn't matter. Like it doesn't like like your contract of accepting that offer is to ship within one business day, I guess, from my understanding. And so what you want to do is if you're going on vacation Thursday, you want to set your store to go on vacation like Tuesday, like a couple days before, so that if any of those outstanding offers come in, you can get it shipped. I definitely had to like I think I had to cancel one when I went to Tennessee the year before because I did not recognize that problem right there. And I still did it like a day ahead. The problem is when you go on vacation mode, you always get less sales typically. Now, if you continue listing items while you're on vacation mode, you might stay pretty consistent. I myself did not do any work. It was a full vacation. I did not think about work at all. I did upload the last video like the day I got there before um, – when, like as soon as we got to the place, uh, I uploaded the rest of that video. But yeah, I didn't do anything. I did source, you know, I went to three thrift stores, but who can't go to a thrift store in a new area? Like it's in our blood. It was very exciting and that's what we did there. The last two items I just packed up, those were hook fishing performance short shirts. They're the long sleeve lightweight. You see a lot of fishermen wear it. And one sold for $19.99, the other sold for $20. I paid nine bucks a piece on these. They were all 2XLs. They're in really good condition. Yeah, really nice shirts. So right here we have the brand Bear Bottom. This is definitely a new one for me. Sold for $19.99. Never seen it before. It's got a little bit of that, almost like a Patagonia type vibe to it maybe. And uh, sold for decent money. You know, 20 plus shipping. I probably paid. I don't know if the other thrift stores know about this one. So I might have got it for like four bucks. Because it's a new brand to me. And if it's new to me, it's a good chance... 
the thrift store, you know, it's kind of new to them because I've been at these stores many years and know many of the brands like this Ralph Lauren, 10 bucks. Ralph Lauren seems to be going pretty, pretty down in like the business casual pricing. So 10 plus shipping really, like I said before, not trying to spend really more than $4 on something like this. But they're, they're nice shirts. I mean, I have a couple that I wear. You just still got to make the money. You know, you can't just buy them because they're nice and they don't sell. Unless you want to build your own wardrobe. Or you could sell locally, I guess. But that's a whole nother thing. I'm not really in the local selling camp. I've tried it a little bit. I haven't tried it, like, with full effort. But not for me. I like, I like the distance of the customer being, you know, online. Out of my hair. The next one is a vintage shirt. This is... Uh, actually got it from a friend of mine who's local. He's a reseller. I bought a bunch of his old clothes. This has like a wolf on it. It's Art Ultimate Sportswear. This went for 25 plus shipping. So pretty happy about that one. Looks like it's right over a pound. So we're going to definitely put it in one of the bigger poly mailers or go with the flat rate depending. Okay, 716 ground advantage. So we're going to throw in the big poly mailer. Yeah, this is the vintage vibe type stuff that... I'm not into so a lot of people are finding this type of like giant wolf on the sweater like that's cool now I mean trust me back in the day like wearing this stuff you were not cool if you had a giant wolf on your shirt people thought it was kind of goofy but now it's like pretty cool so and it honestly depends on how you wear something I think like your body kind of like wears the clothes I guess like sometimes the clothes wear people's body I think is is kind of how it goes but then sometimes if you have like you know a fit enough build you can wear anything because your builds kind of what's what's speaking in and right now I'm way behind on my build because I definitely drank more than I normally do on the trip I ate a lot of uh I mean I ate fish but you know it's restaurant type stuff pretty much ate out a lot we cooked a little bit but um, it was mainly like eating eggs for breakfast and that kind of thing. So I definitely need to hit the gym. I did hit the recumbent bike this morning. I did 30 minutes on the recumbent bike, which was nice. And yeah, I was rusty. I was sweating pretty good just because I was so like just behind. And we're going to try to hit some weights today. I, I'm way behind though on work. Like I, I got to get the shipping out. It's taking a little longer. You know, I'm doing the video, which is fine. Y'all you know, edit this video maybe tonight or tomorrow night possibly but yeah that was a columbia long sleeve with the hood so similar to hook but columbia not as great this is a lacoste 4xl v-neck sweater and this one might have gotten returned i'm not sure if it got it's tough when you get into those giant sizes like that because those dudes i mean they're so big like sometimes stuff doesn't fit right even if it is a big size because you know it's just hard to fit a big shape sometimes and i think this one got returned i hope it wasn't because it was too small but um i don't really remember the reason still sold 25 dollars plus shipping and i got it right at a pound so six dollars 23 cents on the label yeah lacoste is a pretty good one it's another one that's heavily faked but it's a little easier to notice the lacoste fakes than some of the like true religions in my opinion but there's some Lacoste ones that I'm not really sure about either, so kind of hit and miss when it comes to spending up on them. Here's a Robert Graham. This one went for 20 plus shipping, mainly because it's a lot more colorful. Earlier in the video, we had that one that went for 12 plus shipping, but it was a brown striped one. Like this is a more colorful one, so you know, 20 plus shipping is kind of like the bottom I would expect for most Robert Grahams. This next one is Eaton Contemporary. Now, this reminds me, I had a couple people, maybe like five different buyers ask, when is their item getting shipped out while I was on vacation? And I didn't, I didn't see all of them come in while I was on vacation. I think I saw like one. And I definitely got a couple today. So it seems like after the weekend had passed, after they didn't get their item Monday, it seemed like three of them messaged Monday night to today, which is Tuesday morning. And they're basically just wondering like, where's the item at and a lot of times it's because they did not look at the um the message when they bought it so when it went on vacation mode they just didn't see it so they're asking like where their stuff's at and i get it so i just told them like hey i've been on vacation like i'm shipping it out and all the people are saying like okay thanks you know like and i get it you know people are so used to getting things quickly that they don't want to forget that they 
didn't get it or whatever. So here we have a Nike. This Nike one is sweet. I think I paid 10 bucks for this one. It's got this really cool looking camouflage that I haven't seen before. And it sold for $29.99 plus shipping. Geometric polos are a pretty easy get when it comes to the short sleeve polo category. Camouflage, I always sell that well. It's just a cool style. I wish I had more camouflage things in my closet. I got one pair of American Eagle camouflage shorts, which people are like, well, you should just go to eBay to buy some. And I'm like, yeah, I, I guess. I just, I thrift so much. That's pretty much all that I wear. It's just whatever I thrift. And it's, you know, keeps that cost down. I don't really, I don't get too beat up about what I'm wearing. Here's another Ralph Lauren. This is, again, $10 plus shipping on the long sleeve button shirt. God, there's just a time that that used to be a lot more money. So, kind of stinks because the store still price them up, but um, still, you can find some good ones, the linens, the silk ones, the camp shirts especially for Ralph Lauren. They're still out there. Speaking of camo American Eagle, there's one right here. This is the longer length, and I actually think that's in my size, but the longer length one is is not right. Well, no, the waist is too small. The longer length one, in my opinion, is not very comfortable. I don't like anything touching my kneecap or even remotely close to it. It just doesn't feel right. It feels like I'm going to like get snagged on it. You know, it's like, I just, I don't like it. That's like the... Uh, one Tree Hill vibe, the longer, uh, the longer shorts, you know, cargo shorts, things like that. And here again, this one's far away, so we're gonna use our second flat rate envelope, save another 50, 50 cents. So that's a dollar today just by having that. And yeah, that didn't seem like a lot, but it's like, I'm not shipping everything padded flat rate. Like a lot of people use padded flat rates for everything, and to me, that's crazy. It really is. Just like, dang, man, you don't even want to save 50 cents to a dollar, but to each their own, I guess. I'm trying to save every nickel. Here's one. It's Psycho Bunny. This was actually one of the guys that asked where his shirt was. So Psycho Bunny went for $20 plus shipping. I found more polos in this brand and like t-shirts and v-necks rather than short sleeve button shirts so definitely haven't found many in this uh, category but really good to pick up these are expensive shirts these are really expensive i think they're i don't know why they're popular but i know for a fact they go for a lot of money brand new i'm picking them up if i see them next up the female resellers will know this this is rag and bone rag and bone is an extremely popular female brand and for men's i've seen a couple items in the men's category with this brand and i've typically picked them up these are a pair of chino shorts they went for $22.49 plus $8.99 shipping. So, uh, Rag and Bone. I guess what it comes down to is if there's a really good men's brand and you find it in a female version, typically not great. If it's a really good female brand and you find it in men's, there's a good chance it's going to be good. Uh, Madewell is one that I just went heavy on. I bought like five Madewell men's skinny jeans, and I hope they sell. <laughs> like, they were. Um, I mean, I think they were between seven fifty and like nine, or maybe maybe five and seven fifty, or six and seven fifty, something like that. So I bought like five of them, and um, I think the comps were looking good, so I went with them. But I have not had too much experience with Madewell men's, but we'll see. Maybe they just started making men's, or maybe I just got lucky. I mean, I'm sure somebody donated their their entire closet. They probably gained weight and couldn't wear any of those Madewell skinny jeans and just donated it all. So that's definitely what happened there. This is a Lacoste uh, short sleeve polo, 10 plus shipping, so not a lot there. $5 on the label, a meager sale. Here's a pair of Hurley. This had like the all over Hurley logo and it had like this blue and white ombre. Ombre is pretty, pretty much like one color to another. Uh, like blend, I guess. It blends into the other color, something like that. 10 plus shipping on this. So this is one that I honestly expected to sell for more, but maybe the market's just flooded with this stuff and people aren't paying up for it. They're like, well, whatever, man. Here's another uh, swimsuit. This one's pink, black, white geometric. Let me see. Yeah, so this one's Hurley. It went for 15 plus shipping. So Really thought this was the bottom for this type of design. So, you know, 15 plus shipping is closer to our uh, $25 mark, but then 10 plus shipping 
you know, not great. But they're both Hurley. They're cool. They're not like your standard solid color or whatever. They got some uh, design to it. But yeah, if you pick this up, you know, 5 into 25, it's fine. 3 into 18, 19. Well, 3 into 19, really. That's fine. For me, at least. Oh, nice. I'm going to save this one for the end. I'm going to skip over to this one. This is Travis Matthew. Now, I'll say Travis Matthew is golf brand. This is a pair of Chino shorts. Uh, they're going to be picking up popularity because I think it's a Masters week, too. So, shout out to Mike, K&M Resell. He's now a new, new golf enthusiast. Uh, Masters week, so I'm sure he's watching. Golf stuff, Travis Matthew. It's, it's, it's out there. So, like, as common as Ralph Lauren is, Travis Matthew is pretty common in golf. It's not low, low quality, but... It's not very high quality either. It's kind of mid. <laughs> I hate even saying it's mid, but it's mid. It's like the perfect definition for it. But there's some good stuff in their brand. This cool vintage Ralph Lauren polo, it's got these awesome stripes. This is a very old label. I've had this shirt for a very long time. I think I priced it way too high, but it finally sold for 10 plus shipping. So glad to see somebody found some uh, found something in this polo. And who knows if it just got buried in the... Uh, in the uh, pages of eBay because it took so long to sell. It's gone. Somebody's going to like it. And last but not least, we got this black and white. And you know what? This kind of looks like the, um, what is the popular thing now with that, the girl. Ah, oh, I can't remember it, dude. It's, um, I could put it in editing and, and show you, but uh, I was going to say, Oh, the Adams Family. So the Adams Family look, that's kind of what this is reminding me of. And because her name's Tuesday, right? And I was going to say the show Friday, but I was like, it's not Friday. But um, Tuesday, yeah. So this is a rag and bone chino shorts. Now it has that black and white stripe. This one went for $40 plus shipping. So $48.99 for the rag and bone shorts. That's wild. That's insane. So almost 50 bucks on that uh, pair of men's chino shorts. Probably the highest men's chino shorts I've had. I mean, I've had some um, jet lag cargo shorts sell for a lot of money uh, before. But yeah, this is the first time I've sold a 40 plus on a chino short. So yeah, that's pretty great. And there you have it. I finished shipping, finally. So happy to get out of here because it is 1 o'clock. I haven't had lunch yet. I've got some ribeye steaks at the house, so I'm probably going to grill one up while... Uh, I do maybe a little bit of, maybe I'll edit while I grill my steak. Hopefully you guys found some brands out there that you hadn't seen before, some that like you're really interested in seeing if you can pick it up and sell, and maybe you can go out and find some yourself. So I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.